in the mountains of the Caucasus, compiled by the desert dweller of the Caucasus mountains, Schema Monk Hilarion, a conversation between two hermit elders about inner unity with the Lord of our hearts through the prayer of Jesus Christ, or the spiritual activity of modern hermits. Russia will perish if it stops honoring the name of God, warning of the Athenite ascetics at the beginning of the 20th century. Author's Preface to the Second Edition This book was written with the help of God with the sole purpose of providing the fullest possible explanation of the Jesus Prayer, which, according to the teaching of all the Holy Fathers, is the root and foundation of spiritual life, at the same time its light and perfection, and therefore in our work all the power of speech is primarily aimed at explaining this subject. Everywhere we place prayer above all virtues, among which there is nothing equal to it, of course at its highest degrees it unites us with God in such a close and intimate union that in it we are with him according to the word of the apostle we are one spirit first Corinthians six seventeen, and we become partners of the divine nature second Peter 1 4 of course such closeness and such extreme unity of our spirit with God cannot exist anywhere except in prayer and also in the worthy communion of the holy life-giving immortal mysteries of Christ. Having achieved grace-filled unceasing prayer, a person achieves according to the teachings of St. Isaac the Syrian the end of all virtues, becoming the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit, which abides in God and God abides in him. 1 John 4:15 through 16 There is nowhere to go further and there is nothing for anything because in God there is an end to all our aspirations desires and expectations in him is eternal life and endless bliss the goal of the aspiration of all rational beings we call the Jesus prayer nothing more than the reverent invocation of the saving name of our Lord Jesus Christ at every time in every occupation and in in every place to whom whenever possible according to one's own strength zeal and will this is possible for all of us of every rank gender age and condition for god has no respect for persons romans 2 11 as it is said about this in the life of the thessalonian saint gregory palamas see the russian philokali of bishop theophon volume 5 on the last three pages only in this case a pious life to the greatest extent possible is required since according to the word of scripture wisdom will not enter into an evil soul this saving invocation of the name of jesus christ acting in feelings of deep repentance a humble heart and a pure thought gives us the opportunity to abide in the fulfillment of the first commandment of the lord in his divine love in its action, the Jesus Prayer is the mysterious communication and unity of our souls with the Lord Jesus Christ, the source of life, which is what our true life actually consists of, temporarily and primarily eternal, and in its inner strength uh, it is the love of God, sanctification of the heart, reconciliation with God, confession of faith, food for the soul, and our bliss. But many may naturally have a question. Why exactly is the Jesus prayer presented here, that is, to the Lord Jesus Christ, when the Holy Fathers compiled many other prayers used by the Holy Church for the salvation of her faithful children? This is not because the Son of God prevailed in the triple unity of the divinity, but because he acquired us to God and the Father with his honest blood and is our Savior and reconciler with divine truth. He took our nature into his divine personality, redeemed us from our sins with his life, death, and resurrection, suffered for us the punishment that urgently lay upon us for our sins, our ancestors, and our personal ones. Having himself been tempted, he can help those who are tempted Hebrews 2:18 and therefore in all fairness we must first pray to him apart from him all our prayer is ineffective and must be considered vanity in all prayers offered from earth to heaven he is the mediator intercessor and reconciler only through him and through him do our prayers receive power and we have access to the heavenly father and the throne of grace and whatever you ask from the father in my name I will do it 
that the Father may be glorified in the Son, and whatever you ask in my name I will do. John 14, 13 through 14. We, born in the flesh on earth, now have the boldness to call Almighty God our Father, whereas before the coming of the Son of God to earth no one dared and had no right to call him that. But the Son of God, having become the Son of Man, brought us this highest good. All the apostles especially try to instill in us this feeling of our sonship to God. The holy apostle John the theologian teaches, We see what love the Father has given, so that we may be called children of God, and uh, and become children of God. 1 John 3, 1. It is written about St. Gregory of Sinai in the Philokalia that he, having diligently read the writings of all the saints father uh, and the fathers, having carefully examined, discussed, and considered everything, also saw in the experience of his life the incomparable superiority of the Jesus prayer, the abundant divine power hidden in it, complete satisfaction with it uh, to the highest needs of the Spirit, and perfect peace of our hearts, which, of course, comes from the union of our soul with the Lord and commands everyone who wants to be a participant in eternal life to have all the diligence to acquire it. He reports that many of the saints of God throughout their lives were engaged in psalmody, that is, they performed their prayer service to the Lord by reading prayers, psalms, canons, troparia, etc. But towards the end of their lives, when they approached perfection, they abandoned reading prayer and all its variety and occupied themselves exclusively with the Jesus prayer, as one that gathers together the mind and all the powers and feelings of the soul and directly connects with the Lord. He adds that this this latter, that is, the Jesus prayer, is the shortest and closest path to God, while the first is long, tedious, and not so convenient. And all those who wrote about the spiritual life of the fathers and saints of God could not find words to adequately describe the height and necessity of prayer. And this, of course, is because with its correct production, when it is done in repentant uh, feelings from a contrite heart, in the consciousness of one's spiritual poverty, and guilt before God and in the hope of his heavenly help, there is a union of our heart with the Lord, and this combination, according to the mind of the saints, is the highest degree on the path to eternal salvation, because having united our inner being through prayer with the Lord in whom is the source of life, we can no longer be deprived of eternal life, having in ourselves a, a life and a uh, and a, a self-existent life principle. That is why Simeon the New Theologian says that if uh, we here in this life do not see the Lord, then we will never see him. If we do not unite with him here, then we will never unite. But it is impossible to see the Lord and unite with him without grace-filled prayer. There is no doubt that every other prayer composed by the Holy Fathers is God-inspired, divine, and partakes of the power of grace, according to our due attitude towards it. But despite its more or less complexity, it does not have the easy convenience so that you can read it constantly, at any time, during any activity, and in any place. Despite its brevity, the Jesus Prayer contains within itself a nature that belongs to the Son of God, both according to the economy of our our salvation and according to his divine hypostatic state. Confessing him as Lord and Son of God, we recognize him as the true God, consubstantial with the Father and the Holy Spirit, and calling Jesus Christ and asking, Have mercy on us. We confess the sacrament of economy, which it was pleasing to him to perform for our sake and for our salvation. We recognize him as our Father, who alone can save us, and this, as we know, is the whole essence of our Christian faith, the gospel, and all of Christ's teaching. St. John the theologian, finishing the gospel, says, Now this was written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that you who believe may have life in his name. John 20:31. In a word, the Jesus prayer unites us with the Son of God in the closest way, and in him makes us partakers of eternal life, which according to the word of, Saint, of the Apostle lies in the Son of God. In him is life. John 1.4 
But everyone that has been said so far in praise of the Jesus prayer seems to condemn every other form of our prayer, petition, and uh, church following psalmody, etc. In addition, the apostle says, praying continually with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, Ephesians 6.18. In response to all this, in the book of St. Paisius Velichkovsky, on page 80, it is written like this, Do not imagine this, O pious reader, that the Holy Fathers, by leading us away from much external singing and commanding us to learn intelligent work, bring a blemish on the Psalms and Canons. This is not so. The essence of the Holy One is devoted to the Holy Church, in which all sacred ceremonies are, heal, are headed by ordination, and the whole sacrament of seeing God the Word, even before His second coming, including our resurrection, is carried within itself, and there is nothing in the Church ceremony that is human, but all the grace of God, a matter that has no application to our merits, nor any sins for the sake of our detraction. But the Word for us is not about the rights of the Holy Church, but, but about the boundaries in particular. From the rule of monks and living, there is a teaching about mental prayer, which is diligent and heartfelt. It is customary to attract the grace of the Holy Spirit by righteousness, and not by a single word of the psalm, except for the attention of the mind, spoken and precisely with the mouth and the tongue. As the Apostle said, I want to speak five words with my mind, rather than darkness with my tongue. It is appropriate appropriate uh, first to cleanse the mind and heart with uh, such five numbered words saying uh, continually in the depths of the heart Lord Jesus Christ Son of God for the sake of the Mother of God have mercy on me a sinner and go up to sing intelligently since every uh, beginner and passionate person can intelligently act on this prayer in guarding the heart there is no singing until the sowing will not be cleansed uh, for this reason St. Gregory of Sinai, having subtly experienced and judged all the saints' lives in scriptures and spiritual art, most of all those living in him by the Holy Spirit, instructs all diligent in prayer to be taken. And again, having the same spirit and gift, St. Simeon, Archbishop of Solinsk, commands and advises bishops, priests, monks, and lay people to say and breathe this sacred prayer at every time and hour. Uh, no, he said with the apostle, the strongest weapon in heaven or on earth, uh, uh, there, is, there is no name stronger on heaven and on earth than the name of Jesus Christ. The Church of Christ, founded on the apostles, uh, founded on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, being the chief cornerstone of uh, Jesus Christ Himself, Ephesians 2:20, has to stand unshakably until the end of the age on its eternal foundation, which is Jesus Christ. Everything in her establishment by the Holy Spirit must be fulfilled by us unquestioningly, as the Word of God established for our sake of salvation. Outside the Church, there is no salvation anywhere or for anyone, just as during the flood it was impossible to be saved from death anywhere except in Noah's Ark. The Jesus Prayer is the inner communication of our soul with the Lord Jesus Christ, the mysterious unity of our spirit with him, does not at all go against this, but affirms and penetrates all this with its spiritual influence, sheds strength, light, and life on everything, contains within itself, uh, being the basis of all of this, the Lord Jesus Christ, called by this prayer, is the King and divine founder of our Holy Church and all its ranks, statutes, and successions. He himself is present in everything and controls and pours out all the divine powers on everyone, including life and piety. Therefore, whoever calls upon his omnipotent creative name, bearing, in it the midst, uh, bearing it in the midst of his heart, is established on the same basis as the church and is necessarily bound to her by an eternal union. But speaking about prayer, we do not claim that it alone is enough for salvation. But uh, to live as you want in the wills of your heart and in the lust of your flesh, 
Uh, no, you cannot do that. To do this, you need, to the best of your ability, to live piously, fulfilling the entire law of the gospel. The main strength of God is the love of God and neighbors. We must believe in the Son of God, our Savior, as in the true God. From the true God, consubstantial with the Father, in whom all things were, and uh, who came into the world to save sinners, to partake of his holy body and his most pure blood, and to always bear his all-uplifting name in your mouth, with your mind and heart always saying, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, for the sake of the Mother of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. We need to pray to the Lord to let us see our disastrous sinful state in which we all find ourselves. All your spiritual poverty, squalor, and your complete powerlessness in the cause of good, so that he would give us a contrite and painful heart about this, and a feeling of need for his divine all-powerful help which we ask for in unceasing prayer. We admit that all our concern was in the uh, was in compiling this book for which we pray to the Lord God to express all the needs and, uh, and importance and necessity of practicing the Jesus prayer in the matter of eternal salvation for every person. Because apart from the Lord Jesus, the Savior of the world, salvation is impossible for us. But as during the life of the Savior on earth, there were few people who believed in him as God and the Savior of the world and who understood his real dignity. So even now there are few people who would be wholeheartedly devoted to this saving activity, who knew its true dignity, value, and loved it with all their souls, except perhaps those chosen uh, from people who were given from the right hand of the Most High to feel in their hearts the divine power hidden in this work and heavenly bliss. To our great regret, we must admit that we have almost always noticed throughout our entire lives, wherever we opened words about this prayer, we were sure to meet hostility from some people and uh, even bitterness. They immediately began to object. Why is it not said about this and that? That's all about prayer. Will prayer alone save? They will reproach you. Uh, although not to your face, but later on the side, but only in front of those people to whom prayer was taught in the weakness of life uh, and in constancy. In a word, they uh, try with all their might to weaken their zeal for the teacher and thereby suppress the desire to engage in the Jesus prayer. It seems that even talking about her is unpleasant for them. They don't feel well at this time, and therefore they try not to hear about her at all. Hostility to the Jesus Jesus prayer, as everyone understands, is a demonic matter. The Lord Jesus Christ came into the world to destroy the works of the devil, and therefore he tries in every possible way to counteract this. For the evil one knows that prayer unites a person with God and completely snatches him from the dark powers, and therefore, according to the testimony of the leaders, Macaria tries for nothing more than to prevent a person from praying uh, for him it is a fiery sword. But this very opposition to prayer and the fierce struggle of evil forces shows the divine dignity of prayer and its saving effect on us. If this had not been the case, then the evil one would not have risen up with such ardent fury against the prayer books, who, as has long been noted, are subject to special persecution and those who do not love this work of God. How much we had to learn during our rather long life in the monastery and desert, both from conversations with spiritual people who fully comprehended spiritual life in its fundamental foundations and in its deep inner flow, visible only to the all-seer God himself, a person who has within himself this divine flow into eternal life, also from reading the patristic books and partly from his own experience that with Without prayer to the Lord Jesus Christ, there can be no spiritual life in us, its movement, development, and formation of our internal forces, because that the inexhaustible source of all this, the root and foundation, is the omnipotent and all-powerful Lord Jesus Christ. He alone is immortal, unapproachable, in the living light, but no man has seen him, neither can anyone see him. 1 Timothy 6.16 
making the most detailed explanation of the Jesus prayer, the word of our scripture met the inevitable need to touch upon the meaning of the name Jesus, alone above the Son. Through him is fitting that we should be saved. Acts 4.12, that name which, according to the word of the apostle, every tribe worships, in heaven, uh, earthly, and in the underworld, Philemon's 2.10, and which containing omnipotent power thereby testifies that in this name called upon by believers dwells the only begotten himself, the Son of God incarnate for our sake. But here again, there may be a question, why did our explanation stop at the name Jesus when the Son of God has countless names, and of course they are all equal to each other, are they? This is because the name Jesus means Savior, and he is so close to the human race. It is needed by it and is uh, such an exceptional inevitability that uh, without him is it, is it is impossible to even think about the possibility of our salvation. Just as the Son gives life and joy to everything in visible nature that is involved in life, so to an indescribably greater extent the Lord Jesus Christ revives every soul that believes in him with his life-giving inspiration, gives life and death, brings it down to hell and raises it up, and creates everything according to the advice of his will, and, uh, in his, and through his will, according to the apostle, this is our holiness, 1 Thessalonians 4.13. Take the sun away from nature, and everything in it will perish. All life will freeze. Take the Lord Jesus Christ away from our souls, and they will be dead in their essence, like a block of earth having only existence, but alien to life. In the name Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, our sweetest Redeemer, is found in his presence. And if anyone wanted to be more confident in this, then he can be shown the word of the Lord Jesus when he, proving to the Jews the truth of his teaching, said, Everyone who wants to do the will of God understands this teaching. John 7.17, that is, from my experience, so here too enter into the feat of doing the Jesus prayer, the achievement of which, of course, is only possible with a good life and fulfilling the gospel commandments. Achieve living communion with God, unite your heart with the Lord Jesus Christ, and then you will see in yourself this mystery, inaccessible to earthly knowledge, and any science of this world take take away the divinity from the name of Jesus Christ, and it will be like the name of each of us. Then what advantage will this name have, exalted above every creature? But it is dear to us, like the name of our Savior. Unity with him is our eternal life. This knowledge is especially necessary for those of us who embark on the feet of practicing the Jesus prayer, because with the consciousness of this, the fear of God, reverence, attention, and as far as possible, a proper attitude to the matter involuntarily arises in us, and this, as much as possible, contributes to the correct flow of prayer and its establishment in our hearts. A very great thing is to feel the real presence of the Son of God in the name Jesus, and this is the highest sacrament of spiritual life, which, as we know, having as its basis communion with Christ and unity of our spirit with him from this consciousness, as it were, naturally receives divine power, all creating and life-giving, in a word, resurrecting her from the dead. Why are we generally weak, weak and powerless in our service to the Lord and in all our spiritual affairs and corrections? Because we do not have this saying, this saving, this all-reviving consciousness. Not only do we not want, but we are also afraid to recognize the presence of the Son of God in prayers to him, prompted by evil thoughts and the wrong mood of our inner state. Meanwhile, with consciousness, and even more so when the Lord gives, with the feeling that in his name he himself, our divine Savior, is present, with his terrible presence, our prayer enters into its proper order. The soul, shocked and filled with fear of presence of God, immediately stops in its uncontrollable wandering across the face of the earth, gathers itself with all its strength and feelings, so that there is no longer any place for evil thoughts and absent-mindedness. But what is necessary is attention, reverence, 
holy fear, sobriety, and the whole assembly of a pious and good mood. The heart, like wax from the fire, melts from the feeling of the closeness of the Son of God, and from the touching of him with the mind and heart, as the great Macarius the Egyptian says about this. The natural coarseness and whiteness of the heart is transformed into a spiritual property, and its combination with the Lord is... Uh, is very effective and easy. The love of God as an internal union connects uh, the, our spirit with God. Then a person will see a wondrous change in himself, renewal of his inner strength, revival of the spirit, and uh, resurrection to true life, having previously been suppressed by its mental and physical movements, enters into the light of the face of God, partakes of the holy place of the Lord, tastes that the Lord is good and lives in a state of the most uh, of the of the most otherworldly strength. The carnal mind cannot accept this proposition that in the name Jesus is the Lord Jesus Christ himself, as we learn by addressing many people on this subject. <coughs> it reads the law of God bodily and cannot understand the essence of the Spirit of God, 1 Corinthians 2.14. But can he take away this divine feeling from the mind of the believer who sees God existing in all creation, in heaven and on earth, in the seas and in all abysses? There is not the slightest line in space, not a single moment in time, but everything that exists in the visible and invisible world is full of the presence of the divine. As the purest and boundless spirit, the Lord is everywhere with his entire being, and without a doubt he remains in his holy name. You just need to remember the theology says that although the action of the omnip uh, omnipresence of God appears everywhere, it does not appear equally in all degrees of creation. Otherwise, it appears in impersonal beings and in another form in personal ones. Otherwise, in the pious, otherwise in the wicked, here and here according with the acceptability of creatures. And this may be the true reason why they do not want to give the name Jesus divine dignity and have this name, as it were, of the Son of God himself. Everything of God is incomprehensible to us. Can we understand the most holy mystery of the Eucharist in which the Lord Jesus Christ himself, being in his presence, transforms bread and wine into his true body and his honorable blood, the same body that was born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, lived on earth, was crucified on the cross and suffered, and the very blood that was shed on the life-giving tree for the belly of the world by partaking with the faith and reverence of this most holy sacrament. We partake of the spirit of the divinity of Christ, and with our lips, and tasting his all-pure body and blood. But all this is by faith, reason, and concept, uh, but all this is by faith, reason, and concept have no place here. The Holy Apostle says that the Jews crucified the Lord of glory, the first, first Corinthians 2, 8, but it is clear to everyone that the Lord of glory not only cannot be crucified, but not a single creature can even look at him because of the impregnable light surrounding his throne. The Jews crucified Jesus, the son of Joseph, also of Nazareth. Meanwhile, this Jesus, son of Joseph, is indeed the king of glory, but he hid it in human form. So in the God-man, because of the two natures, divine and human, sometimes the property of one nature is taken into the meaning of another, because they are in one person of the God-man. But the carnal mind, not recognizing the divine dignity of the name Jesus Christ, of necessity thereby relegates it to the level of an ordinary name. And we ask him, why do you call on this name in your prayers? Why do you worship it? Why, according to the word of the apostle, does every tribe of heaven and on earth, under the earth, worship in this name? Philemon's 2, 9 through 11. And can there be anything without a name? The name expresses the very essence of the object and is inseparable from it. So the name Jesus means Savior. This verb is the name Jesus, says the 50th chapter of the book by Callistus and Ignatius Anthopolis. Men who have achieved living communion with God embrace and kiss it like the full act of prayer, being filled with joy that surpasses all reason, why? Of course, because the name is for them like the Lord Jesus Christ.
Christ himself, uniting with him in their spirit. They hear eternal life within themselves, and therefore they rejoice with great and inexpressible joy. The name of God is exalted everywhere in Scripture above all else, since this is characteristic and befitting of God himself. From the east of the sun to the west, exclaims the Godfather prophet David in divine delight, praiseworthy is the name of the Lord. High above all languages is the Lord. His glory is in heaven. Who is like the Lord our God who lives on high? Psalm 113, 3 through 5. Thou hast magnified thy holy name above all. Psalm 37, 2. But here someone can say that it is not this name Jesus that is so exalted and glorified, but another, the divine name that belongs to him. All names belonging to God are equal to each other. Between them there is not one greater or lesser, just as in the Holy Trinity everything is one. Divinity, greatness, glory, property, and power. Prayer in the name of Christ the Savior, acting in humility, repentance, heartfelt contrition, and pure thought, unites our soul with him, and being in the center, or what is the same, constituting the root and foundation of spiritual life, gives a person the opportunity not only to see, uh, but to contain, as it were in, in an embrace, spiritual life in all its fullness and vast spaces in its mysterious depths and unexplored abysses and in all its fundamental foundations, because here, from unity with the Lord, all divine powers are given to man, directly drawn from the source itself. The Lord Jesus Christ is the King of the spiritual world, of course, and of all things, uniting with him in prayer through spiritual communication. We, in some way, by his infinite goodness towards us, uh, become partakers of all the good things contained in him tasting eternal life in the very source and heavenly bliss, which according to the minds of church teachers will consist in the sight of God and in the communion of his good being. The Lord Jesus Christ is light according to his divine word about himself. I am the light of the world, John 8:12. By entering through prayer, which is the aspiration of our mind and heart towards God, into this divine light, we become, by the inevitability of our communication with him, partakers of his uh, of his uh, never-ending insights. Then the Son of Truth enlightens our sinful soul with the brilliance of the ever-present light. So here the, world, the word of the Apostle, the theologian, is fulfilled to the end. The light in the darkness of our sinful state um, shines, and its darkness is not overcome. Uh, John 1 5 there is no doubt that one can pray to the Son of God in addition to the so-called Jesus prayer but other supplications prayers and sighs and even uh, and even for those who can without words uh, with one inner aspiration of the spirit with the feeling of the heart but this latter is the property of those who have succeeded for most people it is not possible no matter how we pray to the Son of God, the name Jesus Christ cannot be excluded from our prayers, no matter what their nature and content. Among all the names that, uh, that are in the Holy Scriptures that belong to the Son of God, the name Jesus, for us sinful inhabitants of the earth, is the closest, most necessary, most amiable, and most persistent uh, to us and cannot at any time be taken away from us as the only name in him it is fitting that we should be saved acts 4 14 and for whatever reason we began to deprive ourselves of this name uh when the son of god deigned to deigned to take it upon himself taking our nature into his personality, if, according to the apostle, the entire fullness of the divinity dwelt in the flesh of Christ, then this same thing necessarily belongs to his divine name, Jesus Christ. All our prayers, supplications, thanksgivings, and the entire church, with its statutes, ranks, additional investigations, and regulations, have Jesus Christ as their basis. As the Apostle says, for no one can lay another foundation than he who... Uh, who lies who lays the foundation and this is jesus christ first corinthians 3 11. 
Therefore the Lord Jesus Christ is the cornerstone in the work of building our salvation. He who builds it without uh, without this uh, uh, is, as the Apostle says, uh, the stone is Christ, 1 Corinthians 10.4, and on this rock is built the Holy Church, which, according to the word of the Lord, not even the gates of hell can overcome. Therefore, to bring it into our bellies, we see all the inevitability of the unity of our souls with the Lord. The venerable majesty of the name Jesus and its incomparable excellence, um, heavenly height, and truly divine dignity are shown in the words of the Apostle Paul, just as for the sons of God, equality with God the Father was not the theft of divine honor, so God gave him a name above every name, so that in the name of Jesus every knee would bow to those in heaven and things on earth and under the grave, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, Philemon 2, 9 through 11. Here both worship and confession, and his name, uh, and he himself the Lord Jesus Christ are presented uh, inseparably by uh, in, in one aggregate position. For a believer who loves the Lord and always prays to him, the name of the Lord Jesus is as if he himself our divine Savior. And indeed, in the production of the um, heart and mind, the Jesus prayer, this lofty truth, is best felt. As the saint says about this, John, St. John Chrysostom, abide continually in the name of the Lord Jesus, so that the heart of the Lord and the Lord may consume the heart, and the two may be become one, you see how he merges uh, the Lord with uh, it with the Lord into one name and says inseparably and collectively because it is so and there is no way to separate in consciousness and spiritual feeling this name from the person of the God man with such a separation something completely incongruous would come out the name of the Lord Jesus would be somewhere far away from him but such separation does not give us in our spirit a correct approach to the Lord and a heartfelt union with him for where there is division there cannot be unity of life and where there is lack of unity and decay there is no true life when the holy apostle peter confessed christ as the son of the living god the lord told him that on this confession he would build his church since i truly am the son of god and almighty god i will build it on myself what is it necessary according to the carnal mind for the son of god to physically lie down at the foundation of the church uh, no but all this is understood seen and felt spiritually and immaterially uh, speculatively god his holy name and our souls are mental beings and all the action between us occurs mentally and not materially but nevertheless it is really quite perceptible for the spiritual sense but besides everything else uh, one cannot separate the name of jesus christ from his most holy face according to the greatness power and sovereignty of him to whom it belongs for the honor of a name necessarily relates to the person bearing that name the holy martyrs suffered for the name of christ whoever of them denied this name denied christ himself and was alien to all christianity went over to the side of the enemy and was an apostate if only he blasphemed the name of christ you see what relation a name has to the person to whom it belongs perhaps if you look at this matter from the outside only then it appears that way but you need to know that in the spiritual world everything is understood seen and felt spiritually reason here has the property not of creation but of destruction because with its carnal concepts it interferes with the immediate purity of spiritual contemplation which is why the apostle commands to subdue it with the obedience of faith saint isaac the syrian says if with your body that is with the eyes of the flesh you want to see spirits then why purification in uh why do you engage in ex 
exploits of purification and sanctification. It is true to say that only one who knows the power of the name of Jesus Christ and partakes of the divinity in it, bearing this great name in the midst of his chest, as the greatest heavenly sh uh, shrine, is the heir of the promised land, for its seed abides in him, and will not have to die forever, having in the ever-present source of eternal life. Speaking about the need for the, G for the Jesus prayer in the matter of our eternal salvation, of course, it is assumed that everyone who wants to enter into the fear of this exercise is already familiar with the Christian faith and the statutes of the Holy Church, and to the extent possible remains in the fulfillment of Christ's commandments. That's why we don't say anything about all this, as it is not included in the plan of our essay. We steadily admit that this entire work of ours is entirely one-sided, but we had no intention of writing in detail about spiritual life, considering this matter far beyond our strength, especially since it was written about in detail by spiritual people and those involved in the highest knowledge and wisdom. Our goal in our work was, as stated above, to give its due place in spiritual progress to the Jesus Prayer, to show its necessity, importance, height, and its truly divine dignity, unrecognized by the people of this century. And one can even say, yes, it will not give us uh, this the Lord, the righteous judge, uh, condemns sin and the majority uh, of the monastic world. In this writing, a brief sketch of the person of Christ the Savior is made. This is so that everyone who prays to the Son of God has the opportunity to immediately see his image, although painted with pale colors, completely and uh, completely insufficient, but diligently and with good intention, which the Lord only seeks from us. Attached is an article about the gospel and the parables of the Lord, where the divine dignity of Christ, the Son of God, is proven, especially by examining his saving teaching. This book does not at all pretend to be learned, and does not try at all to fulfill all the requirements of modern science regarding the logical presentation of thoughts, the correct comparison of periods, and the beauty of speech true, whoever can do this is good, but it seems that even without this, a spiritual object uh, will not suffer damage if an explanation is given to it in a complete and truthful speech, not constrained by the rules of science. Therefore, we admit that in our book there is no systematic order or sequence of objects, and in some places even grammatical speech suffers greatly. It is also not entirely approving in this book of ours that there are frequent repetitions of the same thing. This is from a sincere desire to more strongly imprint into the minds of those uh, reading everything uh, that is written about. Nevertheless, everything transmitted from heartfelt conviction and personal experience should have the liveliest interest, all the more precious to modern times since everywhere one sees an extreme impoverishment of all aspirations in the field of spiritual life. In general, regarding this, we find it necessary to note that our book is not intended for the learned world. People who really find repetition annoying as completely unnecessary because they, due to the development of their minds, can well understand objects even in their individual explanation. But this is not the case with people of simple condition. Not only are they not burdened by repetition, but they even greet them joyfully because, having not understood in one place, they can understand in another, in the third and fourth, and the goal of the book will be achieved, which was written with the help of God, not in order to show the fulfillment of logical rules, to demonstrate the beauty and elegance of speech, and to be a prominent member in the learned world, not at all. And the only thing one way or another, as we talked above, about uh, this above, in all sorts of different ways and repeated repetitions, is to understand the method of producing producing the Jesus Prayer, to show all its need and necessity in the work of our spiritual service to God, to reveal the fullness of spiritual life hidden in it, in a word, to remind both modern monasticism and all those seeking the path to eternal life of the ancient fatherly teaching about mental work, almost completely abandoned in the present time and clogged with vanity and material life. But it must also be said that repeating what is dear to 
the heart should not be difficult for a person who loves his Lord. If a person, by repeating the same thing many times, finally understands the desired subject, then it does not seem that he will begin to grieve for having read the same thing many times, but will be grateful that he has comprehended what he wanted. In addition, we have the testimony of the Apostle Paul. So he says in one place, Be imitators of me as I was of Christ, 1 Corinthians 11.1. 1. And in another, For it is not lazy for me to write to you, but to you it is firm, Philemon 3.1. And uh, after all, it is not difficult for us to repeat the same divine name in our sweetest Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ, in the one word Jesus prayer, because this name is dear to the heart and constitutes its joy, peace, and incorruptible food. And therefore, as a result of what has been said, we admit that in the second edition of our book, we did not at all remove repetitions from it, but left them intact in their places. At the same place, it does not seem superfluous to say that spiritual teaching in the course of its movement has no need to subjugate itself to scientific rules, because this will necessarily have to constrain its unlimited freedom and put his spiritual fullness of life into the narrow framework of the literary law. But the spirit cannot be bound. It must follow its own path, superior to any earthly law, and in no way dependent on it. After all, it would be something incongruous and offensive to the spirit if, for the sake of literary rules, accepted by people, we began to restrain its lofty impulses and heavenly aspirations, full of spiritual power like the depths of the sea. There is an opinion similar to this in the works of Bishop Theophan. The saint writes in one place that the teaching on prayer should not be subject to any system, because spiritual work subject to the system must necessarily endure truncation, be deprived of its boundless freedom, characteristic of the spirit, which is under the action and control of the spirit of God, and not human legislation. It is known that the apostle also warns that the Apostle also warns uh, Christians, uh, the Colossians, lest anyone lead them away with philosophy according to human tradition, according to the elements of the world, and not according to Christ. Colossians 2.8 For according to his own words, the wisdom of this world is violence with God. St. Hezekias the Presbyter says, We convey what we know through the scriptures and what we saw while passing along the path. We testify to those uh, who wish if you want to accept what is said to you. Behold, the Lord himself said, If anyone does not remain in me, he will be cast out like a rod and cut off, and they gather it and put it in the fire, and it burns. And whoever is in me and I in him, he will produce much fruit. John 15, 5 through 6. And St. Uh, uh, Saint Climacus praises a man who, while walking the path, got lost and, ending up in a swampy place, was immersed up to his neck. And sitting in the mud, he shouts to everyone passing along the same path, Don't go here, otherwise you'll drown in the mud, just like I was mired in it up to my neck. And the Lord, seeing his good will, delivered him from his trouble. Without a doubt, every person deserves honor, praise, approval, who conveys to others what he has seen and encountered in his life that is good and useful and at the same time warns against everything bad and harmful because his intention is holy his goal is good and the fruit of his work is beneficial to his neighbors therefore the title of benefactor as a friend of humanity inalienably belongs to him the Lord according to the good will of his heart graciously accepts his small offering like a widow's two might having brought everything from his deprivation as much as has in his mental and heartfelt treasure diligently collected by him throughout his life. An elder's word to young ascetics. If you see a young man ascending to heaven by his own will, then take him by the nose and look down. This will be useful to him from old age. The Holy Fathers, as we see in their God-inspired writings, were most afraid of everything, and therefore warned against a premature desire for a silent life. Whether in the desert or in a monastery, what young monks and novices most uh, were inclined to do, if they are irrationally zealous for spiritual success. But as we... Pr uh, but as we... Uh, 
praise in this book, contrary to the laudable custom of uh, the fathers and saints, the desert having shown its spiritual beauty, we find it necessary, in contrast to this, to say a few words of warning. Just as an unripe fruit, being prematurely plucked from the tree, becomes unfit for consumption and loses all its goodness, sweetness, and pleasantness, which necessarily belong to it, according to the quality of its nature, if, having ripened, received its fullness, this is how a monk or novice destroys the kindness of his soul by prematurely going out into the desert to live a high silent life in which according to climacus a whole sea of unknown mysteries is hidden the holy fathers teach before a person controls himself he cannot go into the desert to live a silent life what does it mean to dominate oneself this according to their holy mind consists in achieving deep humility which is acquired by sincere obedience to one's spiritual father to whom everyone who comes into monastic life must subordinate himself whether he will live in a monastery or in desert silence for just as a mentor is absolutely necessary for a school child so it is also for a beginner in monasticism and being in complete obedience to the elder a newcomer to monasticism must listen to him in everything completely cutting off his will and his understanding from him do not trust as they say in the monastic world your reason and do everything according to the advice of your elder without at all violating his orders you must have pure revelation to your elder not hiding from him a single thought and even more so your entire state of mind without the blessing of his elder one should not do or undertake anything positive to endure everything sorrowful without grumbling in general humility is acquired by deep self-knowledge of one's nature which is completely corrupted by sin from here naturally deep sorrow for one's sins should arise expressing itself in the ever-present repentant mood of the soul poured out in heartfelt tears of tenderness which according to the teaching of the holy fathers have the property of reaping sins like the fire reaps straw proceeding further it is necessary out of a feeling of distrust in oneself to affirm in oneself a consistent self-condemnation self-reproach trying to see oneself as the worst of all creation considering all people to be the best and himself the worst of all this knowledge is dearer and higher than any other because it puts on the right path in relation to god and makes the procession of the power of god unbarred to us but even with all this humility is given to us only by god's power and mercy we ourselves cannot acquire it by any means uh, the whole reason for our failure to succeed in virtue stagnation and immobility in spiritual work is precisely that we do not have a beneficial consciousness of our poverty and there is no call on god's help do not ask says the apostle do not ask in advance uh james 4 2 and we don't ask because out of our pride we don't want to feel the need for god's help for is it possible to think that the all generous lord god who wants our salvation more than we ourselves would refuse us help when we ask for it sincerely recognizing our spiritual poverty powerlessness and inability this is precisely our correct inner structure to recognize our moral powerlessness and the inevitable need for God's help but if in ignorance of this heavenly help were provided to us then obviously this would not serve us well because not realizing the need for God's help we would attribute to ourselves success and good and there uh, and there would be an obvious untruth in which God cannot exist as the God of truth in order to live profitably in the desert you need to learn mental warfare which is excellently explained in the books of saint Ezekiel the presbyter for an explanation of it we send there those who want to find out what it consists of especially the blessing of his elder 
Um, no one should go out into the desert to live a silent life. The elder must know the whole life of the one going into the desert. But even here at first, this latter must subordinate himself to the elder. All this is required by the fundamental laws of monastic life, developed through thousands of years of experience by holy ascetics, imitators of Christ. But to great regret, it must be said frankly, as was noted long ago, that nowadays it is difficult to find elders who truly understand spiritual life for the sake of their impoverishment, uh, then it is necessary, according to the teachings of St. Neil of Sora and Elder Paisius Velichkovsky, to be guided by the writings of the Holy Fathers, passing the royal path, which, according to Climacus, consists of uniting into one, two, or three people, and with a united effort, consider the path of salvation indicated by the Fathers. And this is for those living in the desert, but the monastery has its own rules. We see a very sad phenomena in our experience, being in the environment of modern desert living, and we remember the case described in the fatherland. A young novice came to the monastery, and locking himself in his cell, said, I'm already leaving. The godwise fathers of that monastery, having taken him out of his cell, forced him to enter the cell, and each father uh, said, Forgive me, fathers, I am not a hermit, but a novice. In a spiritual matter, without having completed the previous one, you cannot move on to the next one. Horse racing is not possible here. All the same, as in bodily growth, everything happens gradually. In addition, it must be borne in mind that living in the desert encounters a sorrows of a special kind that are extraordinary, terrible, and frequent which is not possible to convey exactly, not to mention physical deprivations, which are difficult to endure. The enemy torments with that murderous despondency about which those who do not live in the monastery have no idea. And the saint speaks the truth, uh, the latter, that only those monks who have divine consolation can live here, with whom they are comfortable and reflect all the kindled arrows of the enemy. And he also says, let us not be deceived by unreasonable and insolent zeal, and let us not seek that we want before our time, lest we be deprived of what we can get in our time. He illustrates the same truth and another example. It is not easy for a warrior who is not skilled in single combat to separate from his militia and engage in single combat with the enemy. It is not easy for a monk to begin silence without testing himself and without training himself in curbing passions. Through long training he perishes physically, this one mentally, for the path of true silence is the path of the wise, and only those who in their difficult feet have acquired divine consolation uh, swear this help. The great Barsanufius, when one of the brethren read to him in the Petyricon that he who truly desires to be saved must first live in the fraternity and endure, following the example of the Lord, annoyances, reproaches, and dishonor, and so on, and then go to perfect silence, which is the ascension to the cross, that is, killing oneself to everything earthly uh, and in the sea. He answered this, the father said correctly, it cannot be otherwise, and he said to another, before a person enters into himself and controls himself, silence gives rise to arrogance, but he who is perfect in humility controls himself, and he also said, if you dare to step beyond your measure or line, no that you will lose even what you had, but stay in the middle and listen to the will of God, for whoever wants to be sad and ahead, um, a, a, ahead of time, lay aside all external worries and affairs. The common enemy will prepare for him much more confusion than peace, and will bring him to the point that he will be forced to say, it would be better for me not to be born. A general note about the Jesus prayer that zealots need to be aware um, of its acquisition. Those ascetics who are zealous for the uh, spiritual act very badly and incorrectly to their detriment, who in the Jesus prayer seek exclusively spiritual consolation, inner insights, and heartfelt admiration for God, in a word, high states, all this is strictly prohibited by the fathers as showing in a person a pernicious arrogance, according to which uh, considers himself worthy of these high measures. It will be more beneficial for such a person not to engage in 
constant Jesus prayer at all, but to be content only with the general church prayer and his own cell rule. The Jesus prayer must necessarily be immersed in repentant feelings. That mood should be uh, unceasing throughout our lives, according to the teaching of the All Holy Fathers on this subject. When practicing prayer, you need to have the goal of cleansing your heart from sins and earthly attachments through contrition, tears, and tenderness, and thereby preparing yourself to receive the Lord Jesus in pure, heavenly, undistracted prayer, in which our reconciliation and spiritual communion with him is formed, and only here, precisely in a pure heart and deep, sincere humility, with love for one's neighbor, can the highest measures of true heartfelt prayer take place and operate, connecting us with God, allowing us to taste eternal life in him. Look now how laudable and reprehensible and how completely disrespectful to the highest subject of prayer are the actions of those who are zealous about this, who having not been in the crucible of repentance and not having burned out, so to speak, in the feelings of their grave guilt before God and without washing away sinful defilements with tears of sincere contrition, they strive shamelessly to where only the pure in heart see God. God the Father's... Uh, God God, the fathers say, comes by, uh, by himself. This is true, but it is only necessary that the place to receive him is clean. If the Holy Fathers uh, sometimes in their writings prohibit the Jesus prayer, then this is only when it comes from the wrong motives, that is, when they look for only spiritual delights in it, because those who pray in this way acquire a proud opinion of themselves and thereby bring humiliation to prayer, which is not at all the blame uh, uh, to be blamed on the prayer, but for the incorrect attitude towards it. But prayer performed in repentance, humility, with the goal of reconciliation with God, propitiating Him and then uniting with Him, is everywhere uh, pre presented as a necessary means to eternal salvation. And this is not only for monks, but also for lay people, as stated on the first page of this book of ours and through this to be a partaker of the eternal life in this temporary life. Chapter 1. The ascent of a desert dweller to the mountains and a, is a poetic description of the mountainous beauty that revealed itself to his gaze. During my stay in the Kuban forest in the upper reaches of the river Euripa, there is a deserted and quiet and remote places at one time the desire came to me to crawl out of my deep slumps and wilds and earthly abysses in which I always found myself according to the custom of my desert life and climb the highest mountain ridges surrounding our comparatively low lie area in the local dialect is called the Bear Mountains because there is no vegetation there, but only slopes and stone cliffs and mountain piers. That is, however, here and there some plants, but they are also strewn with small stones. I was also prompted to do this by the despondency that had come over me, a terrible mental illness known only to the silent who, for the love of Christ, spend their lives in the mountains and dens, completely removed from human communication. And besides all this, there was some kind of secret hope in my heart that perhaps that we might meet someone special, some true servant of God, a fellow hermit with us, laboring for the name of the Lord in these difficult places where even a hunter's foot rarely and hardly ever passes. The rumor about such hermits, uh, hopelessly living in the depths in small societies, has reached us many times, and they have churches there, and uh, their own priest, and uh, their whole economic establishment, and it happens that sometimes one of them leaves from there to meet his needs in a worldly village, and when fulfilled, quickly and fleetingly returns again to his beloved solitude, full of spiritual peace and heavenly joy, and it happens for the most part that uh, they walk along the heights of the mountains, sometimes difficult and barely passable. We had a secret premonition in our hearts of meeting such a person, and as we'll, we will see later, we were not deceived. 
Taking biscuits early in the morning, we crawled with our novice up the steep slopes and mountain ledges, clutching tree branches and roots with our hands and stones wherever and whenever possible, climbing over ravines and abysses and climbing higher and higher. Due to weakness of strength with great difficulty, only in the evening did we reach the border where the vegetation ends and rocky cliffs and pointed spears begin, protruding in the air with their elevation above the entire country country <clears throat> and like vigilant guards vigilantly watching over the entire surrounding area there is no longer uh, any possibility of climbing many of them since they rush uh, vertically upward and some are still possible to climb due to the estuaries and sloping sides finding a convenient place we sat down to rest or rather to spend the night having looked around we saw ourselves at a terrible height above all visible space the entire surrounding country was under our feet and then a striking view of the mountain ranges and the delightfully picturesque beauty of the era area opened up to our eyes on all sides and along the entire length of the very horizon as far as the eye could reach the spectacle was truly indescribable, the like of which can hardly be seen anywhere, uh, because the nature of the Caucasus is exceptional, unique, and perhaps um, the most unique in the entire globe. The sun was setting to the west, and its rays uh, gilded the entire country, the mountain peaks, and the deep abysses, yawning with darkness and inspiring fear, and small clearings covered with greenery that could be seen here and there between the mountains. There is no way to depict the location of the mountains, their great space, beauty, and wonderful diversity, which amazes the viewer with surprise beyond any word of thought. The mountains looked like some kind of columns of different characteristics extremely beautiful and very awkward and stretched out in a long row which sometimes suddenly and somehow boldly was interrupted by a terrible abyss another and a third then it began again and again stretched to a new abyss and there in the distance it disappeared behind new mountain heights sometimes they showed a look that was disfigured mixed up and extremely varied so that the shape of their outline could not be conveyed in any word they look as if under strong shaking they uh, suddenly turned into a frozen state and that strange sights uh, there were to behold the way two brothers uh, lovingly embracing will walk along the road so two rocks intertwined with each other stood in a clear place under the wall of the mountain and then as happens in a fight one having overcome the other stands with his feet on his chest it's exactly the same here one rock stands on top of another showing with its warlike appearance a kind of overcoming and trampling on its opponent there it looks as if a hunter bending down aims to shoot the animal at his prey then uh, crowded into one heap a group of small mounds dismembers a family of chicks and the caucus collects them under the uh, the krill but to the side of to the side of them a vast mountain of immeasurable size can be seen and it attracts attention with its great uh, greatness more beyond measure and enormity with a regular and beautiful outline standing out in the midst of everything surrounding her she victoriously and somehow majestically raises her gigantic frame and mighty head almost to the clouds and apparently dominates the entire multitude of surrounding mountains being like a queen or like a mother some mountains show the likeness of majestic cathedrals crowned with domes and another spire goes up like an arrow no doubt showing this person the way to heaven in another place the rock showed the likeness of a bear or a turtle or else it took on a shapeless appearance or simply lay a little pile of ordinary stones in lower places as if retreating from the mountains calmer spaces were visible covered with greenery and grazing herds of asians were scattered throughout them from a distance they appeared as black dots slowly moving across a green background along the outskirts of some sides of the space there long rows of trees stood harmoniously and beautifully as if planted by a skilled hand they were similar to what happens in war when prepared for battle regiments stand against regiments the faint sound of the urupa river flowed 
flowing below at the foot of the mountains could just be heard. In the entire space around us, dead silence and complete silence reigned. It was the absence of all everyday vanity. Here, nature, far from the world, celebrated its peace from vanity and revealed the mystery of the future century. Just to say, it was the kingdom of spiritual peace and serenity. The new world is incomparably better than the one in which we people live. The liberation of the soul from everything material, earthly and carnal, freedom of spirit, life eternal in its immaterial nature. It was a temple of the living God not made by hands, where every object spoke his glory and performed God's service with its silent but intelligible broadcast, preaching his omnipotence, enduring power and divinity. We looked back and were amazed by a new extraordinary phenomenon. Chains of snowy mountains stretched along the horizon and flooded with the rays of the sun appeared to be flaming, a marvelous and very charming phenomenon. Mount Elrus, famous throughout the Caucasus, was also visible there, its snowy peak glowing golden in the rays of the evening sky. In general below us was a picture of indescribable beauty the book of nature revealed to us here some of its most luxurious pages and we saw and read everywhere the most manifest powers of god and through the examination of creation we learned the invisible perfection of god romans 120 the vast expanse of space like a boundless sea spilling out on all sides amazed us with its majesty and carried our thoughts somewhere far beyond the limits of everything temporary he reminded us of the infinite omnipotence omnipotence of God and his unlimited dominion, omnipotent power and omnipresence, and infused into us a feeling of fear and reverence with every creature undoubtedly and unconditionally owes to him as the father of nature and creator of all. The silence of the mountains and valleys gave rise to a new feeling. It was a state of inscrutable silence and peace that enveloped all our emotional feelings and dispositions. It was a quiet and spiritual joy. There was a thin voice of cold where the Lord was, 3 Kings 19.12. And indeed, the Spirit of God, who is everywhere and fills everything and supports all creation, visible and invisible, was somehow heard closer and more palpably to the heart and filled all the inner powers of the soul with a more complete influx, which has ever happened to us before. And so we sat and were silent, looked and wondered, and fed our hearts with sacred delight, experiencing those sublime moments of inner life when a person feels feels the closeness of the invisible world, enters into sweet communion with it, and hears the terrible presence of the divine. At this, filled with holy feelings, he forgets everything earthly. His heart, warming up like wax from a fire, becomes capable of perceiving the impressions of the heavenly world. It burns with the purest love for God, and a person tastes the bliss of inner communion with God. He hears in his feeling that the short days of earthly ex existence are given to him not for earthly vanity, but for the attainment of eternity. Having experienced this sublime and spiritual state, you involuntarily ask yourself a reverent question. Why did the Almighty Lord hide the glory of his all-wise creation so far from the world, in inaccessible places, in the middle of mountains and the dens and earthly abysses, and only a few solitary inhabitants of the desert see it, hermits? We don't find it decent to talk about this so as not to cause harm instead of benefit to those who live in the desert and who do not have the opportunity to do this, even if they wanted to, and most of all those who recognize this way of life as completely unprofitable, not understanding its content and inner strength. It is best for everyone to look at this question according to their mental horizons.